Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis. I'd like to go back to 44, verse 30. And Judah speaking, Now therefore, when I come to my servant's father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, it shall come to pass, when he saith, when he sees that the lad is not with us, that he will die. And thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant our father with sorrow to the grave. For thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. And I said, this is the substitutionary atonement of Jesus Christ. This is a picture of Barabbas. This is a picture of a Christian being set free. And you know what I missed last night? Look at verse 1. And he commanded the steward a type of Holy Spirit of his house, saying, fill the men's sack with food as much as they can carry. The food will become bread. And put every man's money in his sack's mouth. God, Jesus Christ, will not take your money. And put my cup, the silver cup. You know, silver pictures in the Bible, it pictures redemption. I was, re I just, I was going through because I, I missed a couple marks and I marked my body. I saw that. I was like, wow, how did I miss that? The chapter begins with a redemption cup. Jesus said, oh, this cup, Lord God, Father, if it would pass from me. This is remarkable. Chapter 44 is remarkable of what happens to a Christian. I couldn't pass that up. Chapter 45. And well, let's, keep, let's keep reading from where we were reading before. Now, therefore, I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad a bondman to my Lord. And let the lad go up with his brethren. For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me? Least peradventure I see the evil that will come on my father. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. Joseph's losing it. Man, the tear ducts are running. And Judah is speaking. To, and you got and the Bible doesn't record, but you got to admit, Judah. What's Joseph think? What, what's, have I really touched this guy? He's not the man. He's your brother. Cause every man to get out from me. Everybody in the room but these, these 11 men. Get out. So when Jesus Christ reveals himself, he's going to reveal himself to his brethren and no one else. The nations are not going to know that Jesus Christ, I forget where it says in Revelation, they know not his name. I forget where that's written. No one, when, when the time that Jesus comes, doesn't even know what Jesus is. They've been worshiping the false beast. They've been worshiping the false prophet. They've been worshiping Satan. And they're not going to mention Jesus Christ. And he comes with, with, with a name, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Lord of Lords. With the, mouth, with the word coming out of his mouth. And when he comes down. And the first thing he does. He shows up to the brethren. To those that are his. John 1. He came on his own. His own received them not. <clears throat> when he comes back. They're going to receive him. When he reveals. Hey. I'm the Messiah. Have you had enough of Satan? 
Have you had enough of the famine? Well, why don't I pick you up in your father? Why don't I bring you to where I, I can satisfy you and take care of your needs? Remarkable. And there stood no man with him. It's only his brethren present. No Gentiles. They're gone. You want to have an abomination with the Hebrews? That's perfectly fine. Get out. You know what, you know what place in the Bible that happened? A little girl dies. Jesus shows up and they're crying. Oh, they're, they're paid to cry and mourn. Jesus said, hey, she's not dead. She's sleeping. <laughs> Peter, James, John, mother and father, come with me. Shut that door, please. And I think that's where he says, damns will arise. I think that's what he says. And no one saw that girl resurrected, Jewish girl resurrected, but her mother and her father, Peter, James, and John. No one else. You're not going to laugh and make yourself abomination to God and Jesus Christ and see miracles. They can't say, oh, Jesus showed us miracles. I ain't going to show you nothing. You're a wicked and, and adulterous nation. And he wept aloud. Jesus wept. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. Heard what? His weeping, I, I assume. Staying outside the door with a, with a glass. Of, what's going on in there? I don't know. And Joseph said unto his brethren. Here we go. I am Joseph. Now you can see the eyes are blinking. Hmm? What do you mean, Joseph? You realize he's been gone for for thirty five, six, seven years. We'll see the next 37, 37 years a minimum. Who's Joseph? Oh, he's not. Remember? Does my father yet live? And they're still blinking. And his brother could not answer him, for they were troubled at his appearance. Now let's go run to Luke 24, 37. Luke 24, 37. Let's see what this note is. Luke 24, 37. Luke 24, 37. Let's see the power of the gospel. Luke 24, 123, 37. And let's start verse 36. Remember, the, the women that said, Jesus is risen, we've seen the angels, they're like, yeah, right. <laughs> probably, what the, probably what the brother I'm thinking, right? Yeah, you're ain't Joseph. How did you know, you, how did you know about Joseph? Uh, and as they spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, sound familiar, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and afraid and supposed that they had seen a spirit. He said, Why are you troubled? Why do these thoughts rise in your hearts? Behold my hands, behold my feet. Here comes Jesus. He walks in the room and they were, Oh! Alright, Joseph and his brethren are already in the room. He just made a revelation to them. They're like, I Can't say nothing. They were troubled. Kind of interesting. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. Isn't that what Jesus said? Behold my hand. Come here. Look at my hands. Isn't that remarkable? 1,700 years later, if not more, just basic, you see the life of Jesus Christ by an old boring book that written by who we don't know who it is and and it's just tables and, and stories. Really? I want him to stand before God one day and say that to him. And they came near and they said, Now watch this. And I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold unto Egypt, 3728. Uh-oh, he knows too much. He's not an imposter.
Now, therefore, be not grieved. They're grieved. <laughs> That's what they are. Just don't be grieved. You're grieved. You're angry with yourselves. That ye sold me hither. Okay. Now, watch what he says. He sold unto Egypt, verse 4, that ye sold me hither. Now, let's look at it real quick. Another learning here. Did the brethren of Joseph sell him to Egypt? No. They sold him Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites sold him to Potiphar. But the charge is to the brethren because they're in charge. Jezebel goes out and signs her husband's name and has a man killed and steals property by eminent domain. And God tells Elijah, Elijah, I can never get the two. Understand. You go down to meet Ahab, and I got a little message for him. Why did you kill Naboth? Ahab had nothing to do with it. Joab kills a man in an army in peacetime. I don't know their names. You can go look it up. And his brother is also charged for the murder. He said, well, wait a minute. He didn't, Joab killed him. Yeah, but his brother had the same anger. His brother had the same means inside his heart to believe that I want to kill that man because that man killed our brother. And we need to realize that if we do something, Jesus says, woe unto offenses, where they must come, but woe unto them that are involved in offenses. Joseph needed to go to Egypt. You brothers ought not have sold him. Isn't that interesting? You know, we may think we're clean, but as Christians, I'm talking about Christians, when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to realize we're going to have more wood, hay, and stubble than we think we're going to have. Every idle word shall be judged. We're in trouble right there. Me, myself. The thoughts that I have are going to stand at the, just, just because it's a thought, it's not an idea. Not a action. And yet thoughts are actions. Thoughts are verbs. And we will stand at judgment. Unless we confess. I don't think it's really possible that we can truly confess all our sins. Because most of them we don't think we're sinning when we're doing it. How many times, here we go, I'm going to date myself on this one, and I'm guilty. How many times have we walked up to a coin telephone and checked the thing and found a dime and stole it? Stole it! It's not yours! Oh, we give it back to the company, you know, they got, it's, if you can't find the owner, it belongs to the telephone company, it's in their property. Have you confessed that sin? How many times have you done that to say, Lord God, $5.35, I, you don't know. We come up, somebody cuts you off in traffic. Oh, where's it? you're thinking in your mind and you're sinning. You're sinning. So the brethren are charged for selling Joseph to Egypt, and all they did was sell him to Ishmaelites. So before we get on that glory, hallelujah, how great I am, just to see the Christ, there's going to be a lot more sins there than we expect them to be. What sins are you talking about? Oh, sorry, Lord. Didn't think about that one. Now, therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Oh, well, God sent us to do that, Joseph. Really? God sent Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar. I want you to go out there. I want you to destroy Judah. Because they have violently and wickedly sinned. And God says, my servant. And I believe in a way Nebuchadnezzar got right with God and he may be in heaven. Alright? But God's going through his book one day. He's reading like uh, the king in, in Esther. Reading through, hey, oh, wait a minute. Stop, angels. I told every one of the Jews that I will curse them that curse you. Yes, yes God. We're, yeah. Babylon curse Israel. I got to curse them. I got to destroy them. And God told Babylon, go do the work. 
Jesus told Judas, go do what you're going to do, and he's been damned ever since. And I got one advice for you. As far as Israel, we're dealing with Israel. If God happens to tell you, I want you to do something wicked against the Jews, you say, God, I ain't doing it. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, you will curse them that will curse you. I'm not doing it, God. You say, God wouldn't do that. Babylon and the children of Israel did what God wanted them to do, and it was wrong. But they were all too happy to do it. The Nazi party was all too happy to destroy Jews. Now, they didn't have to do it. I guarantee there were Nazi soldiers that said, uh-uh, I ain't, no, absolutely not. As there will be nations in the tribulation, uh-uh, I ain't doing that to them people. I'm going to help them. But God has ordered, say, those Jews need to be punished. Jacob's trouble is in the Bible. God is going to tell Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, do your work. But, oh, I'm going to cast you in the lake of fire that burns forever for doing it. Be careful what your prayers and what you pray to God for, get permission for God to do something. If Joseph's brethren were right, with Joseph and God wanted Joseph in Egypt if the brothers would not have sold him to it God would found another way for Joseph to end up in Egypt wouldn't you think Jacob did you really have to lie to your father Isaac don't you think that God saw that birthright being sold that Esau the uh, despised his birthright do you think besides your mother lying to your dad you think God would found another way for you to get that blessing like Esau would never come home that afternoon and you would not have the children of Edomites Giving you a hard time, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. I can't rewrite what man sins. You cannot get in a time machine in the Bible and say, well, will I go back and do it? For these two years, has the famine been in the land? And yet there are, f there are five. So seven years of famine were in the two years. It has been nine years already since the dream of, of Pharaoh because he said seven good years and seven years of, of famine. The seven years have passed. We are in two years of the famine. It's been nine years. And Joseph was 30 years old when he appeared before Pharaoh. So Joseph is now 39 years old. Well, Jesus Christ was 33 and a half. You can't take a type all the way. It's been five years in which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. There's absolutely no crops. No crops by the one who's taking care of the crops. That's how bad this famine is. And God sent me before you to preserve your posterity, that is your descendants, in the earth. And to save your lives by great deliverance. Now, I... I forget, I have to look that one up. God told Abram, Abraham, your children are going to go to a nation that's not theirs. And they're going to serve them with rigor. Well, here, here's the step. They're in the land. Jacob is going to be coming pretty soon. By the end of this chapter. So now, it was not you that had sent me hither, but God. God is in charge. Of, he's still charged. Somebody had to sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Judas like, hey, 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 hi guys, I'll do it. You really want to do this, Judas? Yeah, I want to. Yeah. Woe on the offenses, I'll do it. You know, Judas, you can back out of it. I'll find somebody else. There's somebody always too willing to do the work of evil. Judas could have repented and got right. But he has made me a father. That's a religious title adopted by the Roman Catholic Church. To Pharaoh, who is a God king, right? What is the Pope of the Catholic Church? He's a God ruler. He's the, oh, what was it? The something of the Father that found in John. 
So there's a Roman Catholic Church in Egypt, 1700 B.C. With the other junk that comes out of Babylon. And Lord of all his house. That seems to be the occupation of Joseph. He's the Lord over the house. And a ruler throughout the land of Egypt, the world. Jesus Christ will get that throne one day. And be ruler of all the earth. You can have the rulership of Satan. I don't want that. I want the, the, the reign and the rule of Jesus Christ. Hasty. <laughs> Make, hurry up. And go unto my father and say unto him, Thus saith, thus saith thy son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen. And thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children and thy children's children. No grandchildren, it's children's children. That's where you get the father. Well, wait a minute. That fa it says father, but it's really that father of that father. There's no grand for father, for mother, for children. And thy flocks and thy herds and all that thou hast. And there will I nourish thee. I'll take care of you. For yet there are five years of the famine. Don't keep on coming back and forth. Come. And thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. I don't want you guys to be poor. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. It's in Genesis 16, 13. 16 what? Genesis 16, 13. 16, 13. And he said unto Abraham, Know for a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. All right, so that prophecy told to Abraham has just begun. That was, and again, I'm just giving you the dates of Usher in the Bible, 1898. I don't, I'm not going to say they're wrong. I don't know. I don't know if that's already better than I am. And we're here now, 1707. So, 100 years, 100, yeah, about 100 years, something like that. 200 years. The ball has started. Now, it's not the 400 years yet. But the ball is rolling. God is the God of prophecy that comes to pass. When we go to a place down here, they got, they got a, 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 a psychic set up. I'll poke my head in there and say, do you know I'm coming? And it gets mad at me. She didn't even cuss at me. And I'll say, God, you know where I am? He goes, oh, you better know I know I know where you don't think I know where you've been. Would you like to tell me what your thoughts are? Would you like me to tell you what you said? Would you like to tell me what you... I, like, I just want to know if you knew where I was coming. <laughs> and I stated today at the farmer's market, I have prophecy for you out of the Bible. You're going to die. How's that? And without Jesus Christ, you will go to the lake of fire that burns forever. That's prophecy. And it will happen. And you shall go tell my father of all my glory in Egypt. My glory. Well, all the glory of Jesus Christ. Wouldn't you say that verse 13 people that going all the world and preach the gospel? What's the gospel? Dad. Jacob is alive. When we were in the upper room with Jesus, the disciples were like, oh, 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 who is this? This is a spirit. No, no, it's me. Check me out. Joseph is telling him, go back to your father and testify of me. Now, how's that? Book of Acts. Go out. Jerusalem, Samaria, and out of parts of the world, and tell them I am alive. And tell them not your glory, not how much of a church attendance you've got, but tell them about Jesus. Joseph, the greatest type of Jesus Christ. Interesting, great. And all that ye have seen, tell them about, tell them your testimony. That's the best thing you got. And I've told my testimony, I had people tell me I'm a liar. Well, it's your problem. Ye shall 
and ye shall haste and bring down my father hither. Well, they keep saying, my father, my father. It doesn't say ours for some reason. And he fell upon his brother's Benjamin's neck. I don't know. I can't picture that. I don't know if they're kneeling. And wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. Man, they're just happiness and and. and Moreover, he kissed all his brethren. Joseph is cool. I mean, I don't mean like cool, man. I mean, he's, he's he's not mad. He's not angry. Come here, guys. You know, later on, when Jacob dies, Israel, they're going to be like, they send an ambassador in because like, he's going to take care. Of, he's going to rub our butt out. And again, he's like, hey, no, I'll take care of you guys. Don't you worry. Where'd you even get that idea from? Uh, all the junk we've done to you? It get this, this gets this chapter gets. I love I love, this is about Jesus Christ, but then it gets so much better. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talketh with him. And we know what we're talking. Joseph, you know when when I broke your thing, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. It was me that broke your staff. Well, Joseph, you know, I'm sorry. I, I called you that. I'm gonna bet you these guys repented, and they're talking about the old times, and talking about that dad, talking about the mothers, and the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house. Don't worry, news will get around, even if you don't have television or radio. Some way it's going. Jesus says, he meets with the, the maniac is there, he says, uh, uh, Where your name is Legion? Yeah, you know, you want to get out of that guy? Well, can we go into the pigs? Oh, well, yeah, sure, no problem, go into the pigs. The pigs run off, they commit hogicide, they, the devil's ham and all that into the river, and next thing you know, the people there, the Johnny on the spot, go run into the, to the headquarters and say, Hey! Jesus killed a bunch of pigs! No, he didn't. But you know, that's how it came on the newspaper the next day. You know, the best thing about the thing I find in the Bible about the media, it records in the Bible and the gospel that people could not get to Jesus because of the press. Now, I know I'm stretching that, but still, funny. Saying, Joseph, brethren, it are come, and it pleased Pharaoh well. All right. Do you know this Pharaoh is right with God because he is blessing and he's going to bless the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God's, there's a possibility that this Pharaoh will be in heaven too. Because God has to bless him because he's blessing the Jews. Watch what he does. It pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. I thought you had an abomination. <laughs> Must have forgot who he was. But again, who knows? I don't know, maybe they do know Joseph the Hebrew. Yeah, they do. So they know they're Hebrews, and Pharaoh says, hey, don't care. I'm happy they're here. You know why? Because the character of Joseph, hey, if Joseph's that good, those 11 brothers are going to be that good. You know somebody in a family where they got one bad relative, whoever it is, and the whole family's condemned because of that one guy. Ought not to be so, but that's what happens. One whole church will be destroyed because of one guy who ran off with the, with the money, a woman, or what? And Pharaoh said, to, said unto Joseph, So somehow Joseph has come to Pharaoh, or Pharaoh's come to Joseph. Because he was just in a room by himself with his brethren, now Pharaoh's there. Say unto thy brethren. So the brothers are not there. This do ye, laid your beasts, get, get your beasts, load them up, and go get you unto the land of Canaan. Get it, it sounds like it's like, get out of here, doesn't it? We don't like those Hebrews, get out of here. And I want Joseph's getting a little worried here. And take your father and your households and come unto me. Now, if that did not bring a smile to Joseph, he was not expecting that. You, you want me to do what? And I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now, go tell their, their brother not there. Now, not only Joseph now said, hey, I'm your brother. I forgive you. Things are right. Go back and tell my father that I'm alive. And by the way, 
according to the rule of Egypt, the king of Egypt, bring dad here and all your people and I'm going to take care of you. Well, it's kind of funny because look at verse 10. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me. Joseph already told you I'm going to take care of him. And Pharaoh, without talking to each other, says, confirms what Joseph said. He got government approval to bring the Jews. Now, if God's not working with Joseph, and this is not a plan of God, what are you talking about? Remember, we just read a few a few chapters ago, Hebrews are an abomination. Bring them. You wouldn't find out all of Hitler to sit down with Jews at a dinner party. Check out your car manufacturers. Find out one car manufacturer that was against the Jews. I'm going to just leave it like that. Here Pharaoh says, bring them. And take your father and your households and come unto me, Pharaoh. And I will give you the food of the land of Egypt. That was Joseph's job. It is Joseph's job. And Pharaoh overrides Joseph in his job saying, take care of your family. Free. Now then, art, now thou art commanded. This is a commandment. This do ye. Take your wagons out of the land of Egypt. They didn't have wagons. They had asses. <laughs> your little ones. For, and your wives. Bring your father and come. He's telling them to take wagons. Yeah, okay, yeah. To, to bring to Canaan, to bring the people. That's how that works. And regard not your stuff. Don't care about the stuff that's... Just come. Don't be overladen. For the good of all the land of Egypt is your. <laughs> Whoa. Take that decree right there of Pharaoh and bring that to action, I mean, Exodus chapter 1. And the children of Israel did so. And Joseph gave them wagons. Let's see, the wagons come from Egypt. According to the commandment of Pharaoh. And gave them provision of the way. Take care of yourself of the way. And all of them, he gave each man changes of raiment, gave him new clothes. That shows up through the Bible throughout. The change in the raiment. They must go through clothes a lot. That's one of Samson's riddles. Hey, if you can tell my riddle, I'll give you a change of clothes. But to Benjamin, he, now watch this. He gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of raiment. What do you think Joseph's doing there? He's testing his brothers to see, you guys still got that envy? I'm going to show more love to Benjamin than you. I'm going to see what you guys are going to say. And to his father he sent after this manna, ten asses laden with good things of Egypt. Ten she asses laden with corn and bread. And meat for his father by the way. You know, get him there, come home, here's your food. And they went out of Egypt and came to the land of Cana. And Jacob, their father, and told him, saying, now here we go, Joseph is yet alive. He is governor over all the land of Egypt, and Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. What? You're saying what? How come you didn't recognize him the first time? You just told me this guy put you in jail, kept Simeon, put him in jail, and he wanted Ben. Oh, okay. Now watch this. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto him. And when he saw the wagons which Jake, which Joseph had sent to him, he's talking to his brothers, he doesn't believe, he looks over their shoulders like, uh, I guess they're right. <laughs> wow, look at all that stuff. Which Joseph had sent to carry him, and the spirit of Jacob their father revived. 
My son is alive! He was sitting in darkness. And on the third day and the third night, up from the grave he arose, and there's God celebrating with all the angels. My son's alive. Here he comes. Prepare. Here comes my son I thought was a prodigal son. He took on the sins of the world. Here he comes. And the angel said, well, where is he going? He's got a few things to do for 40 days, but he'll be back. He'll be right here at my right hand side until he gets his bride. How's that? How's that for interesting? And Israel and Joseph are separated right now, but when they come together, you don't ever see them separated, not no more. How's that? And it, Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. And I will go down and see him before I die. Ooh, I bet you Israel wet his pants at that moment. I bet you if he couldn't move, and I bet you he's, he's dancing right now. I bet you his old bones have come a little bit of alive. 